Hello, St. Stephen's, and welcome to this week's edition of the Fireside Chat. Uh, this morning we had our weekly, the clergy had their weekly town hall meeting with Bishop Stokes, and he mentioned a special pastoral letter that uh, the presiding bishop, Michael Curry, had recorded, and he suggested that we pass this uh, message along to uh, our parishes. And so for today's Fireside Chat, I'd like to read kind of excerpts from uh, past, uh, Bishop Curry's pastoral letter entitled, A Word for the Church uh, for the Easter Season 2020. In the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, we are now at another one of those threshold moments when important and significant decisions must be made on all levels of our global community for the good and the well-being of the entire human family. In this moment, I would ask you to allow me to share with you a word to the church. What would love do? Throughout the Book of Common Prayer, there are rubrics, those small or italicized words that don't always catch our eye, that provide direction and guidance for how a liturgy or service is to be conducted. Rubrics tell us what must be done and what may not be done. They limit us and they give us freedom. They require us to exercise our judgment. And when we are at our best, we exercise this judgment under God's rubric of love. Jesus tells us things like, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, as you did to the least of these who are members of my family, you have done to me. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus makes it abundantly clear that the way of unselfish, sacrificial love, love that seeks the good and the well-being of others as well as the self, that love is the rubric of the Christian life. The rubric of love is seen no more clearly than in the 21st chapter of the Gospel of John. The death of Jesus had left his followers disoriented, uncertain and confused, afraid of what they knew and anxious about what they did not know. Thinking that the movement was probably dead, the disciples went back to what they knew. They tried to go back to normal. They went fishing. They fished all night but didn't catch a thing. Normal would not return. When the morning came, Jesus showed up on the beach, alive, risen from the dead. He asked them, children, have you any fish? They answered, no. Then he told them to cast the net on the other side of the boat. They did and caught more fish than they could handle. And then Jesus invited them to breakfast. After having fed his disciples, Jesus turned to Peter and three times asked him, do you love me? Three, three times Peter said yes. And Jesus said, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. In this, Jesus told Peter what love looks like. Love God by loving your neighbors, all of them. Love your enemies, feed the hungry, bless folks, forgive them, and be gentle with yourself. Follow me. You may make mistakes. You may not do it perfectly. But whatever you do, do it with love. The truth is, Jesus gave Peter a rubric for the nor new normal, God's rubric of love. Today, like Peter and the disciples, we must discern a new normal. COVID-19 has left us disoriented, uncertain, and confused, afraid of what we know and anxious about what we do not know. Our old normal has been upended, and we hunger for its return. I do not say this from a lofty perch. I get it. There is a big part of me that wants to go back to January 2020, when I had never heard of COVID-19. Looking back through what I know are glasses darkened by loss, I find myself remembering January 2020 as a golden age. But of course, January 2020 wasn't perfect, not even close. 
And anyway, I can't go back. None of us can go back. We must move forward. But we don't know for sure what the new normal will be. Fortunately, God's rubric of love shows us the way. In her book, The Dream of God, the late Verna Dozier, who was a mentor to me, wrote, quote, Kingdom of God thinking calls us to risk. We always see through a glass darkly, and that is what faith is about. I will live by the best I can discern today. Tomorrow, I may find out I was wrong. Since I do not live by being right, I am not destroyed by being wrong. The God revealed in Jesus, whom I call the Christ, is a God whose forgiveness goes ahead of me and whose love sustains me and the whole created world. That God bursts all the definitions of our small minds, all the limitations of our timid efforts, all the boundaries of our institutions. Close quote. Kingdom of God thinking is already happening. God's rubric of love is already in action. I've been watching bishops, priests, deacons, and lay people of our church following Jesus in the practices that make up his way of love and doing things we never imagined. The creativity and the risk-taking done with love is amazing. As our seasons of life in the COVID-19 world continues to turn, we are called to continue to be creative, to risk, to love. We are called to ask, what would unselfish, sacrificial love do? What would love do? Love is the community praying together in ways old and new. Love finds a path in this new normal to build church communities around being in relationship with God. Love supports Christians in spiritual practices. What would love do? Love calls us to care for our neighbors, for our enemies. Love calls us to attend to those in prison, to those who are homeless, to those in poverty, to children, to immigrants and refugees. Love calls us to be in relationship with those with whom we disagree. What would love do? Love calls us to be gentle with ourselves, to forgive our own mistakes, to take seriously the Sabbath, Love calls us to be in love with God, to cultivate a loving relationship with God, to spend time with God, to be still and know that God is God. Jesus says, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Jesus says, Michael, son of Dorothy and Kenneth, do you love me? Jesus says, do you love me? Jesus says, follow me and take the risk to live the question, what would love do? This, my friends, is God's rubric of love. This, my friends, is God's very way of life. God love you. God bless you. And may God hold us all in those almighty hands of love. That is a portion of a pastoral letter written by the most reverend Michael Curry, the presiding bishop and primate of the Episcopal Church in America. So uh, just a few announcements before we could conclude this um, fireside chat. Uh, as I mentioned, we had our uh, town hall meeting with the bishop this morning, and the bishop mentioned several prayer requests. Uh, first of all, the bishop's mother has been uh, tested positive for the coronavirus, She's a resident of a nursing home in New York. The bishop has had several conversations with her. She's doing quite well, but uh, he would request uh, that you keep uh, Jean Cole in your thoughts and prayers this week. And also we learned some sad news. Uh, first of all, we learned of the death of the Reverend James Saunders, a former rector of Christ the King Episcopal Church in Willingboro, who died this week. Uh, and also Charles, Dr. Charles Close, who was the husband of uh, Mother Jane Brady, who used to be, an, before her retirement, was uh, rector of Grace Episcopal Church in Pemberton. 
So please keep these uh, families in your thoughts and prayers, as well as uh, all who are infected with the coronavirus and uh, those who have lost loved ones in the, uh, in the pandemic. The bishop did not report anything new regarding the opening of churches in the diocese. He reiterated what he had said uh, previously, that uh, churches will not be open any earlier than the 1st of June, and it could be later than that. It depends on how things develop over the next several weeks, and we're following very closely the lead of uh, Governor Murphy as he uh, makes decisions about reopening um, portions of the, uh, of the state in the weeks to come. I would just uh, call your attention to uh, the website of the Diocese of New Jersey, which has a lot of valuable resource information about the coronavirus and COVID-19. So if you're interested, uh, that's a good place to, uh, to go for uh, an update and for additional information. Just a reminder that our schedule of services will continue uh, indefinitely. Uh, first of all, um, morning prayer from nine, at 9.30 every uh, Monday through Friday. Sorry about that interruption. Um, schedule of, of services until uh, further notice. Uh, morning prayer will be read every morning at 9.30 on uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, evening prayer on Saturday evening at uh, 7 p.m. And then the uh, Sunday morning celebration from the beautiful St. Mary's Chapel at St. Stephen's in Beverly at 10.30 a.m. every Sunday morning. And I'm just completing uh, the second edition of the Teze Evening Prayer, and I hope that that will be posted on our website uh, uh, sometime today. So, uh, until we speak again next week, God bless you and keep you and be well and, and healthy and uh, take care of yourself and take care of someone else if you have the opportunity.